Hello guys, happy Saturday to you and yours. It is good to see you again. Thanks for joining us here on Madness Labs. And today what we're gonna be doing is we're going to build a component three different ways. One being scoped, our styles being scoped to the element. Uh, one, our component being regular, the kind we've been building throughout most of these videos. And then the third one using Shadow Dom. So um, let's... start out on the docs for stencil and what we've got open here is the styling page um, this is where we can find the most information about it um, and what you'll see here is there's a couple different options we have when we go to style our components um, and and we have two major options so the, the regular way of doing it is like we see here in the star rating component which we have made some significant updates to so if you want a really good star rating component um, check out the link for the repo that we've got this all built in in the description um, and we've got it built three different ways here so you can see this is the normal way um, so you can see a regular uh, component and we've got a regular component decorator up here at top and then over here on the right you can see our styles let's bump up our font size a little bit um, and so you can see we've got a regular component decorator um, let's close down our build here so we can get the most out of our screen um, so you can see we've got regular component decorator um, regular styles going on here so we're styling specifically star rating um, and then we've got um, another option of scoped which i'll scroll down a little bit here in the documentation so scoped means that the css styles get scoped into the current element so um, if you've if you've been working in a project um, where maybe you're using bootstrap or something like that and they have some very generic classes um, so maybe you have like um, a generic you know um, is hidden class or something like that. Um, some of your components, like for instance, something generic like star rating might be used somewhere else in your project. So for instance here, I'm gonna go into my index.html. Um, you can see we've got these components running over here in the browser and here's my three different versions. Um, you can see that, that star rating, when we inspect this guy, um, this component itself has a class of star rating. Um, and then you can see the different components underneath it with all the different styles. Um, and those are not getting changed in any way. Um, and our styles, if we click into our head section, we can actually go and see the uh, imported style sheets for each one of these. Um, you can see here the style in our head um, with the engine star rating. You can see here the styles are very, very straightforward. So you can see star rating, uh, star rating input. And so we're, we're styling directly to what we see in our CSS page. And so that's how a normal component works. Um, and so if we go and, and try to add some rogue styling to this thing, like say we, uh, we you know, write some input styles here in our, in our head, um, this is going to trickle down to these components. Um, and so this is very common if, again, you're working in like a framework and you use some really common kind of names for things like dot button uh, or class of dot button or something like that these things can really get in your way. And that's where the other two options become really kind of powerful because they give you an ability to kind of focus in your styles and stop as many of these bleeding styles um, as, as possible. So, um, so I'm not gonna actually change anything. I think that's fairly straightforward. Hopefully you know enough about cascading styles and kind of how that works. But you can see here, what we've got is um, we've got a component that has the regular um, regular styles on it. Then we have the scoped version. And so let's let's take a look at that guy. Um, and you can see the only thing that's been changed here um, between our components is that we've added this scoped is true uh, inside the component decorator. And what that's going to do is it's going to take and it's going to scope all of our styling to this specific component. Um, and so when it includes this. Um, it's not going to include, um, so like you can see here, we have dot star rating, dot star rating. Star rating is a class that we put on the actual uh, component itself. So you can see here in, in all these components, we uh, at the very beginning uh, via our host data, which is a way of like uh, styling and adding attributes to our actual host element, the, the actual star rating component itself, um, we can add these classes. And so we've got this star rating class that gets added regardless. 
Um, and so this star rating is what we're kind of styling in the regular star rating uh, component. But then you can see here in the scoped one, we're targeting something called uh, colon host. And what colon host does is it's the host component. It's where these styles, since these styles are scoped in, the, this host is where these are being served from. Um, and you can actually see this in the docs here. So if you, if you scroll down a little bit, um, they'll show you about the root, defining the root, uh, as well as um, they, don't, they don't cover host um, very much, but I did find this inside of the actual Ionic components themselves, um, a very common way of styling. Um, and what this host element lets us do is focus in our styles. Um, and so let's just kind of compare these side by side. So you can see here's our star rating component um, and how the, the styles here look almost verbatim what we typed in, right? Um, and then here is the star rating with scoped styles. So right off the bat, you can notice a difference here. It's automatically prefixing it with SC for scoped, engine, which is the, uh, uh, or, or the actual name of our component, engine rating scope. It's added another scope at the end, uh, dash H. It's added a bunch of different um, things onto our, onto our actual selectors, and that way they're unique. And so, so now we have something that's a lot more specific in CSS. So if we have some generic rules that are applying to like all classes of button or something, these styles are going to take precedence because they're scoped in. They're a lot more specific. Um, and if we look at our elements even on the, on the page here, so here is our regular star rating. You can see there's the class of star rating, nothing special, nothing crazy there. Um, now if we open up the scoped one, now we can see here, it's got a, all these extra added classes and things. And that's because this is what um, Stencil is doing to apply a bunch of scoped CSS classes. So that way, again, we don't have as much problem with some bleeding styles and stuff like that. Um, so what if that's not enough, right? What if, what if I have a component that I'm putting in a project and like I can't, I can't possibly have it linked to any other styles um, and I also don't want somebody to mess with, with a lot of the things that happen inside the component uh, style-wise. You know, I, I don't want any of that to bleed and I wanna make sure that like I have maximum CSS compatibility. So that is where the shadow DOM comes in. And to do that on a component, um, all we have to do is the same kind of method. In the decorator, we just add a, uh, a Boolean shadow of true. Um, and it will make this into a shadow DOM rendered component. Um, and the styles change uh, not as much. So you can see we still uh, target the host element, just like with um, the scoped uh, thing, or the scoped, <laughs> the, the scoped component. But in this case, in the shadow component, um, any rule that you write is automatically going to apply to the current element that you're in because your styles aren't going to get rendered, um, as you can see here, um, your styles aren't going to get rendered into the uh, head of the document. So you can see here, engine star rating scoped and engine star rating, both of these are hoisted. They're both at the very top. They're in the head of the documents. So they're gonna apply to the entire document. A shadow, uh, a shadow down rendered component is going to be rendered inside of its own little shadow root. Um, so, and we can see this if we go into our uh, gallery here, let's go into our organisms and let's find our uh, engine rating shadow. And you can see here, we open this guy up, unlike the scoped version, you can see that there is a shadow root and then underneath that is the engine star rating component. Uh, in this, right when we open up our engine, um, sorry, sorry, uh, the, the engine rating component, you can see once you expand it, you see all of the elements underneath it. However, when you open the engine star rating shadow component that has shadow DOM enabled, you can see that it actually has a shadow root inside of it. Um, and so all of our component, uh, all of the, the contents of our component is now rendering inside of the shadow DOM. And so you can see there's our styles and our styles are now scoped to this specific element. So they're not gonna bleed outside and they, they will not be influenced by any outside styles. Um, so this means in cases where you like need to make sure that nothing gets inside this component and that it stays completely pure, um, you're really going to want to use the shadow DOM. Um, it does come with a couple caveats. So again, one thing to note is like all of your styles are going to be um, relative to that component. So you can't style anything outside of it. Um, and the other thing is, is again, you can't access um, except with with uh, JavaScript. You can't access this thing with CSS. You can't. 
Um, you can't uh, style your component from outside uh, once you enable Shadow DOM, unless you set CSS variables. So that's what we've done here. You can see uh, on our host element, we've got a star rating size, a star rating active, a star rating hover, um, and all of these things are CSS variables. Those CSS variables on the host element are things that we can actually set in CSS, and then we'll pick up on them and then apply them to the component. So th those things can be set. Um, the other thing to note about a Shadow DOM rendered component is that you don't have access to the actual element itself. Um, and that, that might sound weird, but he, here's the here's why, right? So um, a lot of components that you use, you first select the element um, just so that you can use that as like a kind of a jQuery type selector. Where you can say like, oh, select the query selector, all the you know elements underneath this thing, yada, yada, yada. Well, because, um, and actually we don't even need our, our star rating element uh, in this component. I don't think we're even using it. Um, uh, I was though. Uh, so because of the fact that um, we are using the shadow DOM, remember that in our other component, when we select our element, we're selecting engine star rating uh, scoped. And so we're going to get all of the elements that exist underneath it. However, when we're using a shadow DOM, you can see that our element only contains a shadow root. So what you have to do, um, if we wanted to like console log this out, let's do it in the component did load here. Um, let's just console.dir. Um, and this will put the element uh, on the dot or on, in our console um, with all the attributes on it so we can actually see it. Um, so let's do uh, console dir this dot star rating element. Um, and let's let's console log this guy out and we can see better what I'm talking about. So you can see here if you actually go into the component uh, and you try to go into um, the maybe like the, the content of it. Let's see outer HTML. Where's the inner HTML? Um, so, inner HTML, so you can see blank, it's empty, this, this element is empty, and if I want to do that same thing, um, which I'll do it over here in the console this time, I'm going to inspect our scoped element, um, so here is our scoped element, and I'm going to do that same thing, console.dir, and then we're going to do dollar sign zero, and that's going to get us the current element that we have highlighted in the uh, developer tools, so hot pro tip for you there. Um, and you can see now when I console dir this guy and I go and look at the inner HTML for this guy, look, there is our HTML. You can see we are actually getting back from inside of that element. We're getting all of the content. Um, with Shadow DOM, because you're putting everything in that shadow root and you're locking everything down, you actually have to access that. So uh, a lot of things like, for instance, if maybe you've got like a, a, um, a Google uh, address autocomplete field or something like that. Um, traditionally, if you're building a regular component, you can just you know apply it to, to whatever selector. Um, but when you're using the shadow DOM, you need to remember that you have to access the shadow root. You have to access that in order to do your selectors and to, to get your elements. So I'm going to do go ahead and do uh, this dot star rating dot shadow root. I'm going to console dir that guy, and then you're going to see a completely different result here. Now you can see document fragment, um, and then inside of here you can see there's our inner HTML. There's the host, uh, uh, or there's the uh, the style tag that you can see inside the component here. When we uh, open up our star rating, uh, where was it at, star rating, yeah. So there's our shadow root. Uh, there's the style element, you can see it right there. Um, and so that's gonna get us all of our component uh, stuff. And that's where we're going to be able to set our styles, do query selectors, all that stuff. So that's uh, the one big caveat to know um, if you're working with Shadow DOM. So which which one which one should you use, right? Which which one of these makes the most sense? Um, if you're in a vanilla project and you don't have a lot of things that that um, you're worried about things colliding with, um, most of the time regular components will do just fine. Um, if you're working inside of a project and you have a lot of people and you want to make sure that there's less likelihood of people stepping on each other's feet. Um, Scoped styles are probably going to be the best and least restrictive. Um, I, I would say that if you're trying to, like in our case, we are trying to use components as a way to um, to go about um, phasing out an old project and trying to build our component set so that we can move into a new project or a new uh, scaffolding. Um, if that's your case, you probably want to go all in on Shadow DOM. Um, there's a little bit of a technical cost because again, you have to you have to wire everything that you want to be able to customize via CSS up to CSS variables. 
Um, you, all your whole team has to know a little bit more about Shadow DOM, how that works, how how you can work around some some things. Um, because again, because you don't have access to this thing um, from the outside very easily, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to work with for your developers. Um, but if your goal, ultimate goal, is to make sure that you're not going to run into any issues and that and that you're going to be able to implement these things into an existing solution where you don't know, um, you're a little bit more unknowing of like the styles that have been written and that are kind of being passed in uh, above you, then these Shadow DOM components are going to be crucial um, for making sure that you find success. There you guys, there you guys have it. That uh, This has been a short video um, we're going to try to keep these a little bit more concise um, and I'm going to try to focus in a lot more on just answering one question or one problem. So if you guys have something that you would like to um, for us to cover or you have some more videos that, that uh, or, or you have some feedback on stuff that we could do better um, or maybe you just uh, you just have some something cool to share, um, feel free to follow us on Twitter or hit us up with a comment um, below. And, uh, you know, and another thing is, uh, you know, this... This, 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 uh, this stuff right here. This, this is uh, coffee. And it's, it's not cheap. It's, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm fresh out. I'm fresh out of coffee, guys. So, you should, you should totally support us on, on Patreon, or, or just, just buy me a coffee. Like, just, I mean, it's, it's not that hard. Fine, you know, you know buy me a coffee. Fine, just, just fucking. Like and subscribe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy me a coffee or or like or subscribe. See you next week.